Test. 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 Okay. The Atlanta Rainbow Trout Aquatic Sports Team. The Atlanta Rainbow Trout. <laughs> I think it'll be fine. I tested that tank. She's coming through loud and clear. Okay. We it up. Are we just getting started? Or are we yeah. Okay. But I, I checked it out. I think it's on. I think it's going. Okay. This is on the Atlanta Rainbow Trout swim team. Okay. The Atlanta Rainbow Trout swim team is a mostly gay and lesbian aquatic sports team. They are one of Georgia's largest U.S. master swimming teams and one of the largest within the international gay and lesbian aquatics. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. <coughs> <laughs> the, Atlanta Rainbow, the Atlanta Rainbow Trout Swim Team is a gay and gay-friendly aquatic sports team. They are one of Georgia's largest U.S. master swimming teams and one of the largest within the international... <laughs> the Atlanta Rainbow Trout Swim Team is... The Atlanta Rainbow Trout Swim Team is a gay and gay-friendly aquatic sports team. They are one of Georgia's largest in the U.S. master swimming teams and one of the largest within the international gay and lesbian aquatics. The Atlanta Rainbow Trout has weekly practices and an official training plan. The key to their coaching is that it develops... Oops. The key to their coaching plan is... What? Oh, the key to their coaching plan is that it's developed to train all swimmers, regardless of their experience or ability level. The terms, oh, the terms maximum yardage and minimum yardage and traper. Okay, I don't know if I should even put that in. Kind of sounds stupid. Wait, did you say the terms maximum? Yardage, minimum yardage, yardage and taper all refer to various levels of intensity and training. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think. This method allows swimmers an excellent way to begin. Oh, that's their um, training method. This training method allows swimmers an excellent way to be. Their twain. <laughs> their twain. Their training method allows swimmers an excellent way to begin and to gain competition experience in a non-intimidating setting. Their their training method allows swimmers an excellent way to begin and to gain competition experience in a non-intimidating setting. That's good. Okay. All that? Is that, is that it? That's it. Okay. Do it one more time. okay. The Atlanta Rambo. Can I hold the mic or are you, are you okay? I can hold yeah, it. One thing you might, a question to you. Uh-huh. Is do it in a more normal voice. Okay. Because I think what you're trying to do is you're trying to project it. Uh -huh. And you really don't need Okay, take two. Okay, the Atlanta Rainbow Trout Swim Team is a mostly gay and lesbian aquatic sports team. Oh, it's going to change that. The Atlanta Rainbow Trout Swim Team is a gay... One more time, a little further. The Atlanta Rainbow Trout... Sorry. Okay, the Atlanta Rainbow Trout Team is a gay and gay-friendly aquatic sports team. They are one of Georgia's largest U.S. master swimming teams and one of the... Lar and one of the largest within the international gay and lesbian aquatics. The Atlanta Rainbow Trout team has weekly practices and an official training plan. The key to their coaching plan is that it's developed to train all swimmers, regardless of their experience and ability level. This, this, method, this, training, method, this training method allows swimmers an excellent way to begin and to gain competition experience in a non-intimidating setting. Okay. This runners. Front runners Front Runners Atlanta provides encouragement and support to gay men and lesbians who enjoy running and walking. Their mission is to promote health and physical fitness within the gay community and to provide alternate opportunities for gay people to meet and socialize. Got it. Okay. American Music Show. Um the American Music Show is the longest running public access show ever. The show premiered in Atlanta TV. The show premiered on Atlanta TV in 1980 by co-host The show premiered on Atlanta TV in 1980 by co-hosts Dick Richards and James Bond. 
The American Music Show comes on People TV at 11 p.m. on Friday and 11.30 on Sunday. Ooh. Why is that over? Okay. The American Music Show is the longest running pub. God. The American Music Show is the longest running public access show ever. The show premiered on Atlanta TV in 1980 by co hosts Dick Richards and James Bond. The American Music Show comes on People TV at 11 p.m. on Friday and 11.30 p.m. on Saturday. Okay. Should I do it again? Yes. The American Music. The American Music Show is the longest running public access show ever. <laughs> the American Okay, how's that? That's perfect. The American Music Show is the longest running public access <laughs> The American Music Show. The American Music Show is the longest running public access show ever. The show premiered on Atlanta TV in 1980 with co-hosts Dick Richards and James Bond. The American Music Show comes on People TV at 11 p.m. on Friday and 11.30 p.m. on Saturday. Okay. Okay. This is um, on Uncork a Cure. This is on Uncork a Cure. Okay. The AIDS Research Consortium of Atlanta is one of the first nonprofit community-based HIV and AIDS research centers in the United States and the primary resource for clinical research in Georgia. Uncork a Cure has become ARCA's leading benefit event. This year's theme, A Fusion of Culture, reflects the fact that HIV and AIDS continues to sweep through every community, regardless of race, religion, income, or lifestyle, and that this disease can touch the lives of all of those around us. I will. And that this disease can touch the lives of all of those around us. Over 200 international and local wines were featured this year at the historic Biltmore Hotel. The Connoisseur Reception featured an expanded ballroom with premium wines, live music, and a feast of gourmet food. The silent auction included such treasures as collectible fine wines, original art, and more. That's it. Okay. Bookstore today with Daniel Helmanak, who is reading from and signing copies of his book, What the Bible Really Says About Homosexuality. Hello, Dr. Helmanak. 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 It is so nice to meet you, and we really appreciate you being with us today. Yeah, I'm really glad to have the chance to be on the show with the book. Okay. I think it's just so very important that people hear about it, especially down here in the South. I think so, too. It's a really yeah. important book. Is this your first attempt at writing? Books, no. This is actually my third book. Oh, wow. And this is the popular one that everybody knows me by. My other books are technical books written from university press. I have a book on Jesus, a book on spiritual development, and two books on psychology and religion. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's great. That's uh -huh. quite an accomplishment. This one I wrote because I was following the information as it was coming out over the years. Mm -hmm. And there came a point where it was obvious that everything was settled, the questions were all answered. It didn't mean what all the fundamentalist preachers are saying it means. It doesn't mean what everybody out there in public is hearing, and I thought somebody's got to know about it. So I decided to write a popular book for a change. Yeah, and, and it's uh, such an important issue. Yeah, I mean, it's so. like small, <laughs> easy to read, <laughs> very thin. Right. Yeah, and it's I there. can even read it. <laughs> it's all there, yeah. What scriptures did you use in writing this book to support your theories, and how do they differ from those of opposing views? Well, okay. As far as the scriptures themselves, they don't differ. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm quoting Ching, King James Bible at times, though King James Bible is not the best of translations. So it's just the interpretation. It's the interpretation, yeah. And that's the key difference. The difference is that I take the text back to when they are originally written. And it's not me. I'm summarizing what the scholars have done. And if you read them in the original historical context, what did they mean when they wrote them? It's very obvious that they are not addressing the questions we're dealing with today. So that anybody who's quoting the Bible to condemn homosexuality, if it's an educated person, they should be embarrassed. I mean, to have anybody who claims to be educated after saying the Bible condemns homosexuality, they don't know what they're talking about. That's the, the difference is I'm not just picking up and reading it as if it were written yesterday. And uh, I use the example. The camel through the needle. Yeah. yeah. 
the 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 uh, the popular one. Back, I guess, a couple of years, they were talking about some of you're a real space cadet. Uh -huh. Well, fundamentalists would take that to mean, gee, this is truly a NASA astronaut because the words mean <laughs> a real space cadet. Yeah. That's what they're doing with the Bible instead of putting it back into its culture and seeing what was meant there. That's the biggest difference. Many people have, talked, have never conceived of approaching the scriptures that way, even though this is absolutely common mm -hmm. in all of this, all the seminaries except the fundamentalist ones. You go back and understand what it meant originally, and then you can see how it applies. And if you do that with the texts on homosexuality, there's only five of them in the whole Bible. They just don't mean what we're hearing they mean. They were talking about something different. What does the Bible say about homosexuality? Well, in the words that you just phrased it about homosexuality, nothing. Nothing. The word doesn't occur. Okay. They didn't conceive it. And not only does the word not occur, it's pretty clear in Leviticus, for example, man shall not lie with a man as with a woman, it's an abomination. There is no understanding of same-sex concerns in that text. Mm -hmm. There's clear rabbinical evidence, the rabbis commenting on that text and how it's to be interpreted, that men can do other things with men and women can do things with women as long as the man doesn't penetrate the other man, period. It wasn't a concern about it's two, two of the same sex. Mm -hmm. It was concerned about what they're doing. And the only thing that was forbidden was for a man to penetrate another man. That's a whole different con conception. And the reason they forbade it was the same reason you weren't supposed to eat lobster or shrimp. I mean, fish are supposed to have fins and scales, and if they don't, there's something wrong with them. Okay. Man is supposed to penetrate woman, and if they're doing it otherwise, there's something. It was a peculiar notion of the world, a superstition, as it, as it comes down to that's what the text was about. It's, uh, yeah. And what I'm saying, when you put it back into its own context, when you're reading it the way it was meant to be read, what they meant when they wrote it, it's not at all condemning homosexuality. My point is, if people want to condemn homosexuality, let them start giving us reasons. Let them show what's wrong with it. And I've not heard anybody who's given a reason, a reasonable reason that will hold up what's wrong with it, except they don't like it. Well, you know, I prefer chocolate ice cream instead of vanilla. You know, I don't like it, but that's no ethical reason. You're so interesting. I could sit here and talk <laughs> to you forever, but I know you. you have a lot of stuff to do. So if you want to buy a copy of this book, you can get it here at Outright Bookstore. Or if you want to find out more about Dr. Hominiak, please see our website at outtvatlanta.com. Oh, how about my website, too? Yes, it's visionsofdaniel.com. Well, for Out TV Atlanta, this has been Leanne Reed. We at Out TV Atlanta support the Georgia Equality Project. The Georgia Equality Project's mission is to secure legal equality for Georgians' lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender communities through education, legislation, and electoral participation. Um, this show is a two-year collaborative work of, um, called Hairdos and Tractor Pools and dispelling the misnomers in the South that all gay men are hairdressers and all lesbians are butch and attend tractor pools. So that's where the name of the show came from. The show is about 17 Southern artists from the region. It is gay men, lesbian, was an invitation for bisexual oriented people as well. The artists that are featured in the show are some of the top southeastern artists, from Robert Shear to Raymond Vion to Bo Venable um, to um, Larry Jeans Anderson, um, King Thaxton. And um, the show basically talks about growing up or living um, as a gay man or woman in the South. Um, the show opens tonight, and the show will continue through July 14th here in Atlanta at Trinity Gallery in Buckhead. Um, the show is a compilation of works by the artist talking about their childhood growing up and um, the trials and tribulations or the joys and, and exhilarations that they had as gay people growing up in the South. 
Um, for more information about these artists, they can be located on our website at Trinity Gallery at artatlanta.com or you can reach us at area code 404-237-0370. One of the kickoff parties for Gay Pride Atlanta 2000. Hello, I'm Leanne Reed from Out TV Atlanta. I'm in Piedmont Park this morning with the Executive Director of Atlanta Pride Festival Committee, Donna Narducci. Hello, Ms. Narducci. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule to talk with us. You're welcome, Leanne, and you can call me Donna. Donna, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, how did Atlanta Pride originate? Actually, the first Atlanta Pride event occurred in 1970, uh, in June of 1970, and it was to commemorate the Stonewall Uprising that had occurred the year before in New York City in 1969. Mm -hmm. At that point in time, Leanne, it was not uncommon for, for bars to be raided because it was against the law to serve homosexuals, if you oh, can imagine that. Yeah. Um, and so what happened was, at, at this particular time, on June 27th of 1969, this mm -hmm. bar was raided by the police once again, and the patrons of that bar said, you know what, we're not going to go peacefully. And they started an uprising, and it lasted for three days. And it's fondly known as the Stonewall Riots, and it was what was kind of the turning point for the modern gay movement um, for equality. And so in 1970 in Atlanta, in June, they held a march. The Gay Liberation Front started a march uh, and took it down to the state capitol. And then every year since then, we've had an event, which has now come to be known as Atlanta Pride. Oh, that is wonderful. Yeah. So that's how it all got started. How long have you been involved? With um, I've been involved with this organization since 1993. I was on the board of directors. And then for the 1994 festival, I was the chair person uh, for 94 and 95. And then in 1995, became the executive director. So it's been my paid position since 1995. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. What is this year's theme and why was it selected? The theme for this year is building our future together. And it's because it's the 30th anniversary of Atlanta Pride, we felt like we've really, with this event, have really helped bring the Atlanta gay community together and that we need to continue to work together towards our uh, strive, striving for equality. And so that's how come we came up with the theme, building our future together. And uh, we're also honoring 30 people this year as our grand marshals, one for every year of, of having pride for the past 30 years. So we've really grown that program too. Oh, that's wonderful. So what are some of the other events this year? We have a whole weekend of events going on. It opens up Friday night at 6 o'clock. We have two stages of entertainment. We have a market area with over 200 vendor spaces, and it's anything from like t-shirts to jewelry, a lot of community organizations staff a booth in our marketplace, so that's really cool. We have a whole children's area. Yeah. There'll be a moonwalk, kids activities. We also have a kid care photo ID program where parents can bring their kids and have their photographs taken um, and be given a, a little pocket of information to go with it so that in the unfortunate event that their child might turn up missing, they'll have all the materials that they need to turn over to the police so that the police can get right on it and help locate that child. So we'll be doing that as part of Children's Camp. Of course, we had the parade on Sunday, mm -hmm. big turnout. We've got mm, about 150 groups registered for that. Wow. So it's, it's, it's just a lot of fun. So the Grand Marshals are going to be yes, in the parade? that's right, 30 okay. of them. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, and it's going to be great. Some of them will be on fire trucks. Uh -huh. Some of them will be in their own cars. Another thing about our event, too, um, is that we have the commitment ceremony on Friday night, mm -hmm. and we also have an AIDS vigil on Friday night, so oh, yes. that helps round out uh, the weekend's events. Do you have any future plans or goals for Atlanta Pride? Well, of course, we always want to make this event accessible to everyone, um, and we want to make sure that people know about it, come on out, and enjoy it. And so probably a way that Out TV could help us with that would be getting the word out. Obviously, what a great name, by the way, Out TV. Thank you. Um, and so if you can help us promote the event next year, mm -hmm. that would be terrific. And then, of course, come on out and film it so that, you know, if people are unable to come to the event, they can watch it on TV. I mean, that's just really cool. So yeah. we appreciate you guys being out here and helping us out. Oh, we appreciate you letting us be here. Sure. Hey, this is Leanne Reed with Out TV Atlanta. Welcome to Atlanta Pride 2000. Yay! Yay! Yay.
We at Out TV Atlanta support the Georgia Equality Project. The Georgia Equality Project's mission is to secure legal equality for Georgians' lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender communities through education, legislation, and electoral participation. Hey, this is Leanne Reed with Out TV Atlanta. Welcome to Atlanta Pride 2000! Welcome to the 8th Annual Atlanta Couples Together Commitment Ceremony. We are so happy to see so many out and proud people here tonight. Friday night, over 100 couples pledged their love to each other in front of their friends and family in the 8th Annual Pride Commitment Ceremony. With the ongoing debate over same-sex marriages heating up, the desire to commit to a long-lasting relationship was the hottest topic of the night. I will respect you and sustain you and be with you in the love that has claimed us. The Prima Voce Ensemble of the Atlanta Feminist Women's Chorus performed during the service. Reverend Jay Neely, the District Coordinator of the Universal Fellowship of Metropolitan Community Churches, performed the services. Good morning, this is Terrence Steele with OutTV Atlanta. We're here at the 10th Annual Gay Pride Festival. Uh, right now we're at the entrance of Grant Park and uh, the Cyclorama. As you can see, it's a big crowd. It's, they're about to get ready for the 5K run, and it looks like it's going to be a, a pretty competitive day. Hi, this is Terrence Steele, and uh, right now we're with one of the many participants in this 5K race. Uh, can you tell us your name, please? Uh, it's Brad Ashburn. All right, are you ready for the race today? I'm ready to go. Done this for about four years. Okay. Brought the dogs. Uh -huh. Are your dogs running with you today? They are. Okay. But they're generally running ahead. Okay. <laughs> I'm keeping up with them. Yeah. And I've run this race many times. This is how I kind of begin Pride Week with the kickoff of this race. Okay. It's a great race. This is my first one, and my dog's actually running. I'm just here to support him. Okay. How do you think you're going to do today? I'm just uh, going to run well and finish the race. So I'm not going for first. Are you not trying to win? I'm here to run today, just run. It's going to be a fun race, though. We're here to be with our friends. There are a lot of friends here. It's a okay. friendly, friendly race. <laughs> My name's Kim. Kim. And I'm Neil. Neil Feather. Thomas, Thomas, Thomas Setzer. Setzer. All right, congratulations. Y'all, have you ever done this race before? We've done it three years. I, Kim, Kim's won it for three years. Oh wow. I've, I've been, I've won it twice and come second last year. So. I was third last year. Really? Second this year. Okay. It's a good course. Is it? A good it's, tough hilly course. It's a fun race to do. It's nice and nice and friendly. Everyone's real friendly. Everyone cheers. You have a lot of good support. Yeah. I enjoy doing it. What organization are you with? Um. We're with Frontrunners Atlanta. This is the organization that's been putting it on, and this is our 10th anniversary of the Pride Rum Walk, and we're real excited that uh, we've gotten this far. How long have you been involved with it? Um, this is my first year as race director. Uh, first time I ran it was in 1994, so a little while. So this is a fundraiser? Uh, yes. We, uh, everything that we raise, all the money that we raise, uh, benefits our four beneficiaries this year. We, um, the first one is the Atlanta Lesbian Cancer Initiative. That organization benefits uh, lesbians with cancer and their partners. Uh, we have Positive Impact. That's an organization that provides mental health services to folks affected with HIV. We have PFLAG Atlanta. Of course, that's the organization that helps um, uh, families deal with issues as, as um, their children are coming out. And finally, Team Atlanta is a new organization 
They're providing uh, a coordination for sports and cultural organizations, gay and lesbian organizations in Atlanta, and they will be coordinating the involvement of, um, of our athletes going to the gay games in Sydney in 2002. How exciting. Yeah. Yeah. We started 10 years ago, we had about 270 uh, participants and we have grown. Uh, today we probably have maybe seven to 800 people uh, registered. We are, from what I've told, the second largest uh, gay pride race in the nation. I think we're only surpassed by uh, New York. For more on the Pride 5K run, please see our website at outtvatlanta.com. Hi, welcome to the Human Rights Campaign booth. I'm Scott Dixon on the Atlanta Steering Committee. Uh, the Human Rights Campaign is the national advocacy organization for gay and lesbian causes. We lobby Congress, we make contributions to political candidates, we help educate the public on gay and lesbian issues, we help advocate for increased funding for HIV and AIDS causes, uh, we sponsor the Equality Rocks project this past April, uh, and also are a big sponsor of the Millennium March on Washington. Uh, some of our local activities are our involvement here in Pride every year, uh, the annual HRC dinner every May. We also have a barbecue event in the fall, a bowling event in the fall, and our National Coming Out Day celebration. Uh, we have a lot of our HRC merchandise here over the Pride weekend that has the uh, Equality logo on it. We have information on joining HRC, on the different programs that we sponsor, and we would invite everybody to stop by and see us and ask any questions that they might have. The web address nationally is www.hrc.org. People can find out about the Atlanta HRC activities by going to www.hrc-atlanta.org. All right, I am Jen Chinesi. I'm a team coordinator for AIDS Walk Atlanta, and we have our lovely booth set up here for Pride, the 30th annual Pride celebration here in Atlanta, and this is the 10th annual AIDS Walk Atlanta. Uh, it's October 15th, 2000, right here, right in this very spot in Piedmont Park. Uh, the Walk Benefits Aid Atlanta, which is right across the way over there, as well as 14 other aid service organizations in Atlanta. Um, we love, 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 love volunteers. If you guys want to, anyone out there want to come by, the number is 404-876-WALK. And we also have a website, aidswalk.net, where you can register, you can get all kinds of info, sign up to volunteer. And it's a great time. We have a great amount of fun on October 15th. And anyone out there should definitely come by and check us out. So we have four screens. For more information about screen printed t shirts, I'm Lenny. My company is Action Printwear. Been in business over 25 years. Although we do festivals like the Atlanta Pride, where we print on site, we also offer quality screen printed apparel for just about any quantity or need. Uh, I'm in the phone book under Action Printwear. My email address is actionprintwear at juno, J -U -N -O dot com. I want my Out TV Atlanta. I want my Out TV Atlanta. And I really want my Out TV Atlanta. Please join us next week at the same time and the same place for our special coverage of Atlanta Pride 2000. If you'd like a copy of this program, please see our website at outtvatlanta.com.
To register, call 876-WALK. To register, call 876-WALK. To register, call 876-WALK. To register, call 404-876-WALK. 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 That's a take. Age walk 15 second take one. Call four four eight seven six walk. 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 Call four oh four eight seven six walk. Call four oh four eight seven six walk. Call four oh four eight seven six walk. Age walk thirty seconds. To register for AIDS Walk Atlanta, call 404-876-WALK. Take two. To register for AIDS Walk Atlanta, call 404-876-WALK. Take three. To register for AIDS Walk Atlanta, call 404-876-WALK. Take four. To register for AIDS Walk Atlanta, call 404-876-WALK. Take five. To register for AIDS Walk Atlanta, call 404-876-WALK. To register for AIDS Walk Atlanta, call 404-876-WALK. To register for AIDS Walk Atlanta, call 404-876-WALK. That's a take. AIDS walk, take one. AIDS walk Atlanta, a 10K walk benefiting Atlanta area AIDS organizations. To register, call 404-876-WALK or online at www.aidswalkatl.net. Take two. 
AIDS Walk Atlanta, a 10K walk benefiting Atlanta area AIDS organizations. To register, call 404-876-WALK or online at www.aidswalk.net. Take three. <clears throat> AIDS Walk Atlanta, a 10K walk benefiting Atlanta area AIDS organizations. To register, call 404-876-WALK. Stop. I'm going to do that over. AIDS Walk Atlanta, a 10K walk benefiting Atlanta area AIDS organizations. To register, call 404-876-WALK or online at www.aidswalk.net. AIDS Walk, take one. To register for AIDS Walk Atlanta, call 404-876-WALK. Take two. To register for AIDS Walk Atlanta, call 404-876-WALK. Take three. <clears throat> to register for AIDS Walk Atlanta, call 404-876-WALK. Take five. To register for AIDS Walk Atlanta, call 404-876-WALK. That's a take. This is a redo from the 32nd spot. AIDS Walk Atlanta, a 10K walk benefiting Atlanta area AIDS organizations. To register, call 404-876-WALK or online at www. Okay, let's redo that. AIDS Walk Atlanta, a 10K walk benefiting Atlanta area AIDS organizations. To register, call 404-876-WALK or online at www.aidswalk.net. Okay, let's do that again. AIDS Walk Atlanta, a 10K walk benefiting Atlanta area AIDS organizations. To register, call 404-876-WALK or online at www.aidswalk.net. Take two. AIDS Walk Atlanta, a 10K walk benefiting Atlanta area AIDS organizations. To register, call 404-876-WALK or online at www.aidswalk.net. Okay. To register for AIDS Walk Los Angeles. Oh. <laughs> you know what I should do is get the phone number for Los Angeles. AIDS Walk Los Angeles, Sunday, October 21st. To register, call 213-201-WALK. AIDS Walk Los Angeles, Sunday, October 21st. To register, call 201-WALK. Bad. AIDS Walk Los Angeles. To register, call... AIDS Walk Los Angeles, Sunday, October 21st. To register, call 213-201-WALK. AIDS Walk Los Angeles, Sunday, October 21st. To register, call 213-201-WALK. AIDS Walk Los Angeles, Sunday, October 21st. To register, call 213-201-WALK. AIDS Walk Los Angeles, Sunday, October 21st. To register, call 213-201-WALK. AIDS Walk Los Angeles, Sunday, October 21st. A 10-kilometer fundraising walkathon benefiting AIDS Project Los Angeles. To register, call 213-201-WALK. AIDS Walk Los Angeles, Sunday, October 21st. A benefit. Uh, blah, 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 blah. 
AIDS Walk Los Angeles, Sunday, October 21st, a 10-kilometer fundraising walkathon benefiting AIDS Project Los Angeles. To register, call 213-201-WALK or www.aidswalk.net. AIDS Walk Los Angeles, Sunday, October 21st. A 10-kilometer fundraising walkathon benefiting AIDS Project Los Angeles. To register, call 213-201-WALK or www.aidswalk.net. AIDS Walk Los Angeles, Sunday, October 21st. A 10-kilometer fundraising walkathon benefiting AIDS Project Los Angeles. To register, call 213-201-WALK or www.aidswalk.net. AIDS Walk Los Angeles, Sunday, October 21st, a 10-kilometer fundraising walkathon benefiting AIDS Project Los Angeles. To register, call 213-201-WALK or www.aidswalk.net. A 10-kilometer fundraising walkathon benefiting AIDS Project Los Angeles. 213 A 10-kilometer fundraising walkathon benefiting AIDS Project Los Angeles. To register call 213-201-WALK or www.aidswalk.net. I think that's good. I think we'll find it somewhere in there.